weekend in the faith. Are you ready to see the work of the weekend and the fun of the weekend start? We see at the end of this deadly storm for all that did not believe and take the measures God told them to. Again, the king gives false repentance. And I want to talk to you today a little bit about false repentance. And for uh, Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is the righteous one. And I and my people are the wicked ones. Make supplication to the Lord for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. And I will let you go and you shall stay no longer. Wow. And Moses said to him, as soon as I go out of the city, I will spread out my hand to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be hail no longer. You may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servant, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley are ruined. But the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in the bud. And the wheat and the spelt were not ruined, for they ripened late. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord and the thunder and the hail ceased and no longer rain no longer poured out of the earth but when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder ceased he sinned again and thund uh, hardened his heart he and his servants and Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not let the sons of Israel go just as the Lord had spoken through Moses once again we see that Pharaoh again turns to a false repentance in order to try to manipulate God and he does this all the way through and he does this up until he does the dead man's float if we are to get to the place of repentance that God is desired the king to move to and all that come to the one true living God we have to see that this path that all must walk is more than being sorry it is the turning away from sin and turning to God. And, you know, uh, I wonder sometimes, and I'm not judging, but I wonder sometimes when I have someone come forward and they say they want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And they say they've done it. But two things a lot of times will happen. Sometimes they won't even come for baptism. Baptism is the first step in obedience. And that tells me right there that something's wrong. And then those that do come, come to church for a couple weeks and then drop completely out. I've even had people come and get baptized and never come back. Is that true repentance? Person, only God can judge that. But I want you to think about what true repentance is. It's turning away from your sin and turning towards God. Once again, we see Pharaoh turns to a false repentance. Now, we get to the place to where it's more than just sorry. This last day of the week, we have to see that uh, an all-knowing God hears a genuine prayer for repentance and the cry for mercy but he can see through the false repentance and he sees through Pharaoh even before Pharaoh makes his false repentance ten times God sees through it God sees through everything and he knows us better than we know ourselves you know I've had uh, some people just want to come to church and uh, get saved and take out fire insurance and then love like hell it doesn't work that well way you have to understand that true repentance means not just it's being sorry, but walking away from your sin. Turning and walking the other direction. What was wrong with Pharaoh's confession? He did not confess his sin to God. Even when he did confess, he minimized the sin by saying, this time. And I have people tell me all the time, I've been saved time after time. You only have to be saved one time. If it's truly being repentant and saying the repenter's prayer, asking Jesus into your heart and making him Lord and Savior. Did you hear me? Make him Lord and Savior. You have to make him Lord and Savior, not just Savior. He has to be Lord over it. This time of his sin before were minor or had been forgiven. Pharaoh did not turn away from his sin any of those times. But he says, this time I've got true repentance. Call off the hail. Call off the lightning. Call off the fires. One can pick a number of gods that our Lord is knocking out. In the truth of the one God creator, he is the only one true God who is creator and redeemer. Where do you go for refuge, shelter, and peace? God said that all those that would bring their animals and their servants and themselves into their houses would be saved. If you come into Jesus Christ and come under his protection... You know, Paul talks a lot in the New Testament about being in Christ. Are you in Christ right now? 
Have you repented of your sins? Ask Jesus into your heart. Now, if you have, quit struggling. Accept God at his word. God says, all who call upon my name shall be saved. John 3, 16. We read that yesterday. Trust God to save you. Trust God to save you. Faith saves you. You don't do it on your own. We're trying to do it on your own. Let God do it. There's nothing they could do to stop the hail. There's nothing they could do to stop the fire from the lightning or the shaking of the ground or the destruction of the land. All they could do is rest where God said and rest in Christ. Rest in God. He is our house and our refuge. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for being our refuge. Thank you, Lord, for being our protector. Thank you for being our safeguard. Thank you for once we accept you as Lord and Savior. We are yours. Thank you when true repentance moves us and changes us from following the wide road to the narrow road that leads to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.